So uh, can you all see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So hi, everyone. Uh, in case you don't know me, I'm Nomar Takaiki. I'm from Nepal, uh, a small country in Asia. Uh, so I'm currently studying an Erasmus project and uh, Erasmus uh, master's program in franchise management. And I came across this internship opportunity. So this is my journey. So my presentation outline has the introductions, what were my primary goals, the timeline summary, and what next. Uh, and we're basically describing what we did over the past few months. So how I landed at Cartoza was when Tim came to my university, he gave a presentation and it was quite interesting to know about GIS. I was already acquainted with Hans because he uh, taught us how to use QGIS in hydrological applications. So I was quite keen how to work on it and more. So I talked to Tim and it was quite interesting. And he said, OK, uh, we can we can connect. And that's how I landed this internship. But at the time, I was just doing my second semester of my master's. Uh, in the Netherlands. So our primary goals were to learn necessary GIS skills and knowledge. So as you can see from the GIF, I was pretty much excited. Um, so the four month timeline was from May to August. I was a little bit late on the May because I was in the US for my field trip. So it was a little bit back, but I, I could catch up um, with everyone, with everyone's help and support. So we overall, we did two years of math. We also had scratch game. We did a lot of uh, Python programmings. We also had um, forming of Atlas. We had the Waterbury project. Uh, we did the Django assignments in Python and using the spatial analysis and geodatabase, Postgres, SQL, everything uh, in QGIS and QField. So this was the tourism map that I created for my first assignment, which was pretty, uh, I'm pretty proud of it because it was a lot of work and a lot of support from Jeremy. I thank Jeremy a lot with the roots that he helped me with and all the advice he gave me with colors and everything. So it was everyone's uh, output in this map. We also had this scratch project where we made a bouncing wall game which is pretty much exciting. So it was like, I, I made this from scratch. So interns, you can also have fun during this uh, internship program, not only just working. We also had a summer school training program for a week uh, where we learned basic about GIS database, um, uh, open street maps, like open softwares, which was quite uh, interesting to me because I come from a uh, energy background, hydropower. So knowing that there are a lot of data in that sector too from open sources was quite key. Um, and also we learned about the data collection methods, digitization and errors, simple things. As Tim always said, being pedantic, pedantic is necessary in this line of work. So yeah, it, it was all of those things. Uh, we also did Bobra's project uh, where I created this image uh, following uh, the YouTube tutorials of Bob Rush and QGIS. We also had the Logsec Diaries of documenting everything. Um, I was not keen at first, to be honest, but it was quite interesting when I got to learn about the plugin. So you can be creative, you can add GIFs, you can add emojis to make it sound, make it look virtually like really nice. Um, we also did this health atlas where we learned about uh, how to form up atlas, connect palm trees, uh, basically forming maps and making up atlas and giving up the details that the map needs. We also had the general task. It was not easy at the beginning because I had not much experience with programming. So it was, I was starting from the beginning. But at the end, everything went out. Jackie was really nice, really helpful. He was the best tutor. Thank you, Jackie, for every programming uh, sessions. Um, and also my uh, intern fellows who helped me a lot with this uh, assignment. So we, what we did was we had, a, we had tables that we made and uh, the tables we linked to our Postgres and we formed up in Django too, like. It was just us doing in QGIS. We made a whole website from where we could add and edit and delete or save it as basically like data manipulation. 
things. Uh, we also had the water proof projects where we, uh, where Amy assigned us to build a map, like a tourism map or like a guide map, uh, which would be in a newspaper, uh, as far as I remember. So it was one of those maps that I did during this uh, journey. And the main uh, thing what uh, today here is the small farm project that we did. So I chose the area which was near to where I lived um, during that internship area. So I lived at that time in the Netherlands. Now I'm in Barcelona for my next semester, but yeah, this was the area where I took. So my team of like story behind my map is to acquaint uh, students who are coming to TU uh, campus area to know what the area has. Um, like basic things, what are the recreational area, like the portion of it, what are the uh, residential area, like what places do, have, do they have, simply those things. So in the project journey, we had the data set up in the Postgres SQL, as I said, we formed tables, and then we had those in the Postgres SQL, which we imported in QGIS, and we had the visualization, we formed the forms, which was human friendly, as Tim always says, uh, to line up the forms as if a beginner is going to fill up the form. And we had those data synchronization in QField. Uh, Tim was able to get us the um, bigger version of the QField so which we can uh, easily synchronize our data. And we collected the data and did the analysis and did report. So the, basically, this is uh, this slide explains what my project team is. So get admitted to theater. So what's next? So you can go around, you can move away from the study life, and you can see all those recreational areas, the porters, the bike friendly streets. Uh, basically, that's it. So giving a sort of overview of where the area is, uh, the area is in the Netherlands uh, in South Holland, and a small city called Delft, where I live. Uh, and the TU Delft campus area. So this is a map that I created by myself um, through data collection. So it has a couple of points, uh, points of interest, a uh, couple of water level monitoring stations, uh, which Netherlands is famous for the water, <laughs> and uh, the recreational areas as shown in the map. So doing the analysis, uh, we used the graphic uh, modeler in QGIS. So it is kind of similar to what you do in the pro using the processing toolbox, but this you form up like an idea, like you map up your thoughts, and then you do it with one click. It's you you form it once, and then you can use it again and again. So my land use area category has agriculture, recreational, commercial, residential, and open field. Open field has lakes, boulders, canals, where you can go and hike. Um, in the recreational area, of, obviously, in the sports centers of the UDAF, you have parks, rugby field, basketball field, and many more sports. Uh, also, in my area, there are, uh, as I said, there are canal boulders and lakes. And the points of interest, as I showed in the map before, uh, was bicycle. So this was what I what I did was I already uh, put on the features and then I counted the counted the number of the features from the analysis that I did in the QGIS model. And this was similar to count, but it's the area. You can also use the um, field calculator, but this one is also way simpler because you can use this in every time, so you don't have to click every time going to the attribute table, adding a field. So you can just do it in this way. It's quite simple and fast. So as you can see, my area has large amount of open field and the least amount of uh, residential and recreational area. But, but at the same time, you can have a lot of fun. <laughs> and the water features is mostly it's uh, canals and small part of borders and a leak. Uh, we also did the, I also did uh, the length analysis in the same way in the motlet. So I had a only fence, uh, which was barbed wire. So it was 1.1 kilometer, as you can see. So that was the, the highlighted part is the length. And for the most isolated point, it I also did the same thing as calculating the distance between the points and whichever has the largest distance was the most isolated point for my, in my case. 
And coming from a water background, I am a hydrologist and a flood risk manager, possible uh, in the future. So I did a hazard flood prone area. So which uh, the area which were in the near proximity uh, with the water, I considered them as a flood prone. No more additional analysis were done. It was just based on the distance in QGIS samples. I did not do any hydrological. So in this also way, you can give a preliminary like overview of uh, what can be done in the QGIS. So that's the project that we did uh, for the last few weeks. Uh, summary, we had really so much fun during this internship project. We had all the primary goals. Uh, we learned many QGIS skills. We learned many te techniques, short techniques, everything. We were exposed to uh, open source softwares, which I was not aware of. Now I know where to go and find those things that was really nice. Um, I learned how to do proper fancy proper and fancy documentation of biosign talks in Logsic. That was pretty nice. So now when I do my modeling, every time you do a step, I can go and document and it won't be a boring piece of paper and notes. It would be like really fancy one, <laughs> which would be nice. And I really learned how to uh, manage my time. That was one of the biggest skills that I learned during this internship. And I believe in my mantra that never underestimate your capabilities. So that was really nice. Obviously, it was help of everyone. Everyone's effort was there, but at the same time, you should never underestimate your capabilities. And so what's next? So I'm currently in my third semester, so I'll be looking for my thesis and completing my third semester. So I'm uh, thinking of doing uh, flood forecasting with Clawfish, which again collides with geodatabase and special analysis. So I'm thinking of me to collect them, what I learned in this internship journey. Uh, in the five year future programs, maybe job hunting, uh, do some work in the water resources, flood specialist, and forecasting. Maybe freelance cryptographer. <laughs> if um, in Cartosa, maybe if there comes opportunity, I will not say no. Uh, I would love to work with uh, Cartosa too. Um, and in the future, I would love to be a, a project manager and contribute in the field of water and GIS field. So that was my presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, a little piece of advice to the interns would be um, have fun. I know there can sometimes there could be a little bit overwhelming, overwhelming, but everyone is super supportive. You just have to like write a text. Okay, can you help me with someone? They'll be right there. They're really nice. I did the internship by remote, but I think I know everyone apart because everyone was really interactive, even in the intern hangs, all had meetings. We got to know about each other, a few things. Um, so you, you just have to like ask for it and just enjoy and do. It's a great platform to learn and you are really in good hands, I would say. <laughs> so thank you. That's all for me. Thank you so much, Namrat. I forgot to ask uh, Amy or Luna, are you recording our session? Um, the awkward silence tells me we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're checking out presentation would have been so much to put that on. Yeah. Um, can you start recording now, maybe? Yeah, and no problem. Uh, yeah, sorry, okay. I was on mute. My internal microphone is off. Yes, I'm recording since the beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, thank you so much, Namrat. A wonderful presentation, and it was wonderful to have you in our intern um, um, uh, cadre for this for this intake. So, and we look forward to seeing more of you in the future. Yeah, keep thank up. You. Keep in contact with us. Um, let us know how your journey goes. Yeah. Um, uh, who's going to be next? Is has Fuyani managed to make it into the room? You have made it, Briani. Do you want to go next, Briani? Oh. oh no! Today I, I'm going to follow tradition and relax. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that means he's doing the final touches to his presentation as we were talking about. Um, okay, Chiamo, how about you? Okay, I can give it a shot. <laughs> okay, do your best. Let's see. Thank you. Okay, uh, let me share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can now, yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. 
Uh, I'm going to start with my journey at Cartosa first, and then I'll go to my report. Is that okay? That's fine. No, no problem. Okay, perfect. Um, so I just made a little slideshow to state my journey at Cartosa. So um, the first cartographic project that we had was the Simple Africa map. Um, this is where I learned a lot where um, the grids are concerned and themes and uh, it was just amazing. And also I remember um, getting a lot of critique about making sure that spelling is always a thing that you consider. So thank you, Jeremy, and thank you, Amy. It's still there, <laughs> just to show you proof that it's still there. Um, and then it was followed up by the tourism map. Um, Tim and, and Amy and Jeremy, you really helped me with learning my color theory and also helping me out knowing that there are multiple ways of having a map layout and I must say this is probably one of my favorite maps that I've ever made <laughs> so um, thank you for that and um, we got to do the scratch game so here it was a simple introduction to programming but using blocks of code not actually typing it down but just using it so it was a great Thing to showcase although my game didn't work properly so that's why you're not getting a demo but it was great learning that um this was followed by the bob ross project um this was a project that was introduced by amy and i think i did pretty well i got great feedback from amy and eli thank you so much i think this is probably my favorite pieces of art that i've ever produced because i'm I'd like to consider myself as not the most artistic person, but I really, really love this body of work that I produced. So thank you for everyone that has contributed to me producing this body of work. Um, then it was followed by the health sites where I got to learn about the Atlas feature in QGIS and how it functioned and just great things all around about it. And um, this was followed by the Waterberg project, where um, we were mapping various towns around Waterberg. So I mapped Tapazimbi. It was actually a town where my sister used to work. Um, yeah, she worked there last year. So she gave me great insight on it, and that's why I chose this town. Um, then followed by everything programming. So in programming, we did a lot of tasks in Python and SQL, but my takeaway from programming was that we did a lot of SQL alchemy and we used the OOP principles. Also, I didn't know that they were OOP principles. I just knew them by name, but now I actually know that they're OOP principles. Um, there's actually four of them, which is inheritance, polymorphism, inheritance, I mean, not inheritance, encapsulation and abstraction. So now I know. <laughs> Thank you, Zaki, for that. And we also did a Django task, which helped me remove my fear of web application creation because I've always had a thing of, oh, what if it doesn't work? What if it crashes? So um, it, great, it gave great insight on that. And my takeaway from this internship is I got to learn how to do proper workflow documenting. So knowing that like if it doesn't work now, where, where did it work right? And just for me to look back on how my work is, is improving. Is it improving? Am I going backwards? Am I going forward? So that helped out a lot. It also improved my cartographic skills because I used to doubt that a lot. I remember mentioning it in my first day, saying that's something I really want to improve and I want to work on. So I'm grateful that everyone who contributed to this journey has helped me to actually achieve one of my main goals in this internship. Um, it also made QGIS a whole lot more interesting. Um, you will only learn the basics about QJS in university, but um, this internship has actually opened my eyes that there are multiple ways of using QJS that we are not taught at school. And I also got um, to grow personally and I got self-introspection to know 
what I would want for myself and where the direction is for my life currently. So I'd like to thank you for that. And I also learned some skills in programming. Thank you, Zaki. You were a wonderful teacher. Thank you for that. And I also got um, a great insight to the world of work because when you're a fresh graduate, they never really prepare you for work. They just tell you that there is going to be one, two, three, but they don't prepare you as to how everything actually works. So I am so grateful to everyone for that. And lastly, it also helped me to manage my time because as much as it is a remote internship, you always have to like now remember and be on time and just keep a consistent workflow. So thank you for that. And that is my Cartusa journey. So I'm going to be moving on to my small farm presentation. Um, so the area that I chose was Cliffontaine. It is a small town in Midrand, Johannesburg. Um, this is just the country and province overview for those who might not know where Midrand is. So Midrand is located in Johannesburg in Gauteng and um, it just shows the little towns that are actually available in Midrand. And then I give an overview of what Cliffontaine is, what you can expect from it. And it's just a short description of Cliffontaine. And then we jump, we'll jump right into the spatial analysis. So there were the questions of asking the points per category and I use vegetation points where I used um, statistics by category under the uh, vector analysis tab. And my input layer was the vegetation points where you can now see that they show you the different kinds of, of trees and vegetation that is covered in there. And then we move on to the individual and total area per category. So here I used building and land use area and <clears throat> excuse me, in my building table, I actually had um, houses, churches, schools, and factories. And here we get to see the area measured for every, for individual um, buildings, but here we get to see the actual area for all of those separate categories. Same goes for the land use area where I had um, agricultural, residential, industrial, recreational and commercial. And then we move on to the individual and total length per category. Here I used fences. So here I made use of the open field calculator in the attributes table. And for the total length, I made use of the statistics by category. Um, <clears throat> I then created a join to produce the total length of the the fences where, as you can see, I had different fence categories, namely um, barbed wire, walls, and chain links. And this is where you get the total length for the categories. And then we move on to the most isolated point per category where I chose to use the vegetation points. Um, here I made use of the distance matrix. It is also under the vector analysis tab. And I also just, made a little border around the most isolated uh, point itself. So um, yeah, as you can see, these were the distances covered for the trees to see. And moving on, we are showing the most dominant pipe. And here I used the building layer. I made use again of the statistics by category. Um, I created a join with the building type and then I used um, the ID to deduce which type of building is most dominant. And as you can see, it is houses that is most dominant. Um, the units in my distance is meters. Sorry, I don't know if I don't know if I have a network problem and I can't hear you. So I'm sorry for that. Um, we can hear you fine. Just okay. keep on going. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then um, here next, we were asked what 
our conditions were for each features. So here I used the points of interest. Um, I came across a bump when creating, when trying to analyze this specifically. So I tried analyzing them using the statistics by category and also tried using uh, basic statistics to get the results, but it was not giving what I wanted to see. So instead I just ended up um, selecting the items within the attribute table and seeing from the count what what was available for each um, condition feature where I found that there were five broken features, there were six fixed features, six leaking features, and 12 features that were in good condition. And then finally, we have the uh, water source and vegetation distance. Here I used the points of interest and the vegetation points. So here I tried using the distance to nearest hub points, which, excuse me, did not yield what I wanted necessarily. It just gave me the distance of the, the vegetation points, but it wasn't showing from which points of interest. So I wanted to show from the water point, but it was not giving me results for which point of interest that it was. So I ended up using the um, measuring line tool and just measuring the furthest um, vegetation points to the nearest water points. And these were the results that I yielded. And finally, this is just the overview of the map that I created and of the data that I was able to collect in this short time at Cartosa. Thank you. Thank you, Chiamo. And maybe just some last tips for the new intern intake that you would, some advice you would give them on your way out? Um, my advice would be take everything to heart and understand that when they critique you, they're not attacking you. They are actually trying to guide you to become a better version of yourself. So take everything to heart manage your time wisely, and always ask for help. I know it's it's not always easy, especially for me. When, when I'm doing something, it's not the easiest thing for me to ask for help, but ask for help. They are always there. They are always there for you. Thank you. Thank you so That's much, Chiamo. Um, again, it's been lovely having you in our internship program, and I wish you all the best. I think you're on your master's now, are you? Are you? Um, uh, you no, something? actually, I I just finished my undergrad. I'll be graduating oh. in the next four days. Oh. I, I thought so, I heard that you really carry on with your master's, or, or is that? Yeah, that yeah, I definitely want to. Okay. Nice. And Thank so, you. yeah, we wish you all the best. And it's been a pleasure to have you on our, on our internship program. And um, lovely to see all the things that you've learned um, in the time. Of Thank you for having me. Right. Um, so, Vianney still wants to go last. I guess, Jeff, that makes you next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. Okay. okay, let me share my screen. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Um, so for me, um, uh, at a time like this last year, I had not uh, heard of Katoza at all. Um, I came to learn about it, uh, let's say, late last year, at around, around November when Tim posted of an opportunity um, about QG's web, about uh, QG's web developer. That's when I came to learn about Cortoza. I went and looked at their portfolio, and I was like very interested. And uh, when I saw that they offer internships, mm, I, I had to apply, and I applied for for the May August uh, time. So mm, my internship at Cortoza has been really amazing. Um, when we started, we started with uh, just making a simple Africa map. Uh, uh, initially, I thought I used to think that I uh, I was good at cartography, but only to my surprise when I joined that I that I, I didn't know a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot about cartography. 
And the one thing about cartography is that it involves a lot of detail. You really need to be keen and really accurate in what you're doing to the last, uh, let's say, centimeter or something. Yeah. And so this is the first map I made for doing my internship at Katoza. I was really surprised by it, by how it turned out and uh, from the input of everyone, from Amy, Jeremy, and Tim, it was, it was really, really amazing that I could be able to come up with this. I didn't really think uh, um, I could come up with something beautiful as this. And, uh, and to the next task, um, uh, we, we, I created the tourism map um, for this area is Kisumu City. We're just highlighting the basic tourist destinations in the town, and this is the path that, like the tourist uh, could follow through when traveling through the city. Um, and then we ha went ahead to the Pobros project. Um, I'm sorry I didn't attach the original image from Pobros, but uh, this is basically what I came up with. Uh, I really didn't know that you one could draw literally in QGs, like uh, I really didn't know. Uh, but it was very interesting in doing this project. And uh, I, I really learned a lot about um, playing the shading, the rendering, and everything. And how each and every minute detail matters in this project setup. Then we touched a little on the water bug project. Uh, so these are the water bug projects of the cities that I did from Odimole and Bella Bella. And then went to, we also touched on a little bit of programming with uh, the SQL Alchemy and uh, playing around with the uh, ORMs. And, uh, and my favorite part was Django. It, Django was not uh, really new to me at the time, but uh, I really enjoyed uh, Work playing around with it, uh, like for example, this this for this Django setup, um, I integrated uh, leaflets so that I can be able to, um, let's say, collect uh, a few data set points uh, in an area. Um, so basically, it was uh, like re replicating the small fab project where I use QField, but this one so we use like uh, Django. So that's for. That's for that's for my my journey at Katosa. So next to my what I did uh, for the small farm project. Um, for the small part for, for the small farm project, I decided to choose my my former university, which is which is the Makineta University, the Kenya Technology. It is in Kenya. Um, the reason why I chose it is because. Uh, um, it it is quite expensive and uh, it has just a lot of uh, uh, let's say features that you, you can be able to to collect and it will actually be beneficial beneficial for such institution if they have a such a system where they can be collecting features and be they use it in the management of uh, the fit the the buildings sensors and. Uh, let's say in monitoring the, its state uh, throughout the, the whole year and the whole time so that they can be able to do repairs, upgrades, and etc. So this is the drive. This is uh, um, the botanical garden. Uh, basically, my area of study um, in, incorporates these two. As you can see, this is a reservoir, and this is the water plant. This is the botanical garden. And these sections, I really didn't. Uh, focus more on it. It was more on the upper side of the institution. So well, for the work of the project, um, when we started it, uh, we, 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 the first step was to come up with an ERD design. An ERD design is an entity relation diagram whereby you, you break down, let's say, um, components and uh, see how they link up with other components. Let's say, um, you can have a fence, then there can be fence types. So that is, you, you, through a near diagram, you're able to establish that relationship. Then from designing that, we were able to write some SQL code. Then from this code, we ran the SQL code and we, we developed, our, we created, created our database. Then we linked the database to QGIS. Then in QGIS, we were able to design the forms because uh, 
we the project we are supposed to it's supposed to be a a project uh, let's say a mobile project uh, in that we are going to use it in Qfield and Qfield is a mobile application that we use it in field data collection so really designing that form and making it uh, really appealing to the user is a uh, is a key thing in the in the part of the project so after designing the forms we made the the project offline considering it is from the database we made it offline then uh, pushed it to Qfield, collected the data, then synchronized back to the database, then started conducting some special analysis just to like uh, learn up, learn interesting things about the data patterns, etc. So, so this is my the section of the facility that I worked on. As you can see, here is the botanical garden. And, here is a there's a pond there's a reservoir here and these are buildings and these are there's a swimming pool here as you can see in this inset um this image um so as i move to to my special analysis insights uh, so for for this first task um basically you are to get the the number of uh, the count or the, the number of features that we had collected for each uh, feature like for example for the vegetation we collected 20 trees for the fences like 14 barbed wires in one wall fence type for the land use it was we it, it was in my area um uh, i was able to like uh, the, uh map out as this as this recreational site because this this area mostly it's uh pictures and you can also see there's a pool here and this one are the agricultural zones because there's a lot of agriculture happening around here and this one it's a bit more of a commercial because there's a lot of let's say there's a it's the business side of the institution this section and as also as primarily the educational side where the classes but also there's a business side where they're selling tree seedlings and, and yeah, basically that. So I was able to get the count, uh, which types, and this is the approach that I use. This is a model. Uh, a model, uh, it's uh, created in QGIS where you, it is easy, it, it makes it easy to automate the whole process of coming up with the insight because normally you'll be uh, sele selecting each option one by one, like uh, you, you, get, you say you, you, you have to go and to search for let's say the statistics and categories then you select it then you select each item one by one but with this one it is it automates the whole process you just have to select the layer select the vector field then run and boom it gives you the statistics um for this next one this is a this is the total line length of the line features that i collected uh, as you can see here uh, this is electricity lines uh, the category was the whole low voltage lines that i was able to collect and I was able to map out uh, 267 meters uh, of its length. And for the fences, the fences run, uh, ah, this, the fences length is quite long, as you can see for the barbed door, which is the, like the main kind of fencing that is used in this institution. It's about 7.6 uh, kilometers or 7,600 uh, meters. And for the wall fence, it's only 433 meters. So as you can see in these charts, it uh, basically it's it's only depicting what is in the tables. Um, for this this for these are the line lengths of uh, of the features like broken into down for each for each part. You can see this is a barbed wire uh, around the school, the swimming pool, around the various areas and their lengths. The same approach, but this one you use the only use the line layer. And I was able to get the geometry attributes, uh, which computes the length, and the output is the length of the features. And then for this one, um, we're supposed to get the most isolated point of a feature. The most isolated point is basically the point that is uh, it's far away from the others. Let's say we are talking about let's say example of vegetation or trees. So you have mapped up trees in a certain area, let's say in this area of mapped up trees. Then there's one tree that is quite far from the rest of the other trees. So basically that's what we are sort of getting. But for me, 
this was the point of interest and uh, I was able to get the distance matrix and uh, I was able to find out that the most distant uh, feature I was able to collect was this one, was this one in this area, it was an electric pole and it was quite a distance from the, the closest feature which is this one, a lamppost. Um, um, so for for this part, uh, uh, my main objective was to get uh, uh, trees that will be trees that will interfere with the uh, electric lines. Considering electric lines are not really that high when set up, especially for the low voltage ones, they're really not high. So, for example, in my area, the electric lines are about ten meters, and uh, you'll find that trees are normally not quite far from the electric lines and with time as trees grow they might uh, interfere with the electric lines so so for this uh, for this uh, insight uh, for this insight I was able to get the trees that were in close proximity to the electric lines then um, filter with the trees that are above a certain threshold for, for my threshold I use nine meters because for a tree about for about nine meters and the electric lines about ten meters that's uh let's say some sort of a red flag so you could be able to highlight that uh, and uh, in the future maybe the user can be able to um maybe cut the trim try to trim down or cut it down or something of the sort so that the electric lines are not interfered with um so um, for the land use types that are in my area, I was able to uh, get the agricultural zones, the recreational zones, a bit commercial, and the residential zones. So in my area, the agricultural zones uh, uh, was the largest in terms of size, as you can also see from the chart here, with, uh, occupying 40.4% uh, of the area of interest, followed by the recreational zone, then the commercial, then the residential. Residential zone is it was just basically a tiny one. And for this, basically, the approach was just to get uh, the polygon layer, which is the square shape drawn. Then you be able to calculate uh, the area, create the area attribute. Then you order by expression so that you can be able to arrange it from the highest to the lowest, as you can see. Then for this insight, uh, it's uh, for for the water, water, water areas. So the, there are three types of water areas in my in my area of study, which was the reservoir, and the pond, which there are two ponds, and then there the swimming pool. As you can see, the reservoir occupied the largest uh, area at forty three thousand square meters, followed by the two ponds, then by the swimming pool. As you can see, the reservoir occupy majority of the area. The approach is just similar as the previous one. Yeah. So thank you. And uh, this this uh, presentation here, right, right here, was just made in kids. Wonderful. Thank you. thank you so much, Jeff. Um, any um, parting words of advice for the new interns? Um, for them, I just want to say that. Uh, First of all, you need to work hard, work smart, be ready to learn, be, be energetic, have, have that morale. It, like uh, learning at Katosa is really interesting. Um, I, I, did, I, I thought I knew a lot about cartography before I actually joined here, only to come encounter that I didn't. And also about programming. There's some aspects that I, I really, struggled with before especially front end and the front end part where we're dealing with css but i actually came to learn about it when i was working with the jungle project and uh, um all I, uh, I can all i can add is manage your time wisely enjoy 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 everything and you learn a lot from from the team you learn a lot definitely thank you thanks so much jeff um yeah. I'm conscious that we're in a bit of a time crunch now, um, Vianney. So um, <clears throat> I guess we're probably we, you know, you spent a lot of work 
putting your thing together, we're probably going to run five minutes over, maybe. Um, but just be aware that we don't have too much time left. And um, Vianney, uh, let's jump over to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good, good morning, everyone. I'm going to be fast, uh, Tim. <laughs> I don't like long presentations. <laughs> I always did fast and uh, brief presentations. Well, for me, let me start here. Oh yeah, good morning, everyone. I am Mo I am Voyani Omondli Ptilizi. Um, I am doing my master's at, at VETS. Sorry, Voyani, just hide your sharing bar if you don't mind, just so that it records. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So for me, this is what I'm, I'm going to talk about, about my journey at the Katosa internship. These are the five things that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, for start, for the introduction, I I didn't know what to write here, so I just thought that I'm going to just talk on the floor. Well, for me, coming to Katosa was like, um, I, I heard about it. Someone recommended Katosa to me from my department. Uh, at they said, no, that is actually a great opportunity uh, about Katosa. And then when I searched the company, I saw it's actually a great company that uh, actually aligned with the goals that I, I wanted to achieve at the time. And one of my goals was to learn QGIS because I, I had no idea what QGIS is. I knew that there was a software called GIS, QGIS, but um, because of my background uh, at university, they teach us ArcGIS, everything. So I didn't know the open source part of it. So these were the most things that I wanted to achieve, which I think, uh, Number two was important for me, which is to apply real world uh, t uh, knowledge into real world. And then, uh, you know, um, create a portfolio for my JS project, which is point number nine, and uh, to learn data management, which is the back end, which is your Docker, your post GIS, your PG admin. And this is the timeline of what uh, I, I managed to achieve at Katosa, um, which uh, I, I think uh, it, it's, it's actually a lot of things. You know, when you come to Katosa, the first thing you see is you have to install a lot of programs and you're like, I don't know, I, I only know like 10% of these programs. So how am I going to learn all of these things in, in a space of four months? But surprisingly, uh, I was able to do it. So going back to the projects that I first did, one of the first one, I remember it is a hot task. Uh, you know, my first time in, I was introduced to OpenStreetMaps. It was my first time using it. Uh, you know, um, contributing to open source material, using quick, uh, quick OSM as well into importing my shape files. Every time when I was building a map, I always had to hunt for shape files somewhere else. But with Quick OSM is very easy. I can just import whatever shape file that I need. And I learned some note-taking uh, application called LogZack, which I was using throughout my internship to take notes. And uh, this is the map that I created, uh, the first map that I created using QGIS, uh, a simple Africa map. It took quite some time. I was proud of myself at this time. And this is another tourism map, uh, which is one of my colleagues that also created. I remember I spent like two weeks or three weeks on this thing, trying to perfect it to the way that uh, Tim and Luna and Amy that they wanted, because they, they will say, no, fix this thing and everything. And the final result, I'm so happy. I'm so happy of the constructive criticism that they gave me. It made me able to produce such a map. These were the health sites that I produced uh, to give insights to health sites. And this is, I think this is the project I enjoyed the most compared to other projects, the, the Django project, this one. I, I think uh, this one, because I, I recently started being on the programming uh, scene. So this was very, I enjoyed doing this project a lot. Uh, so this was the part of it, creating tables, trying to edit. They call it crude, 
which is create, read, uh, delete, and uh, edit. And this part, which is entity relations, I think Luna will remember, remember this one. I think I struggled a lot on this one part. I think the biggest take I had on this internship is learning entity relation database on how to create them, how to build them. I think I gained a lot from this one. So this is why I put it here because this was the highlight of me in this internship while I was going through this. So this is one of the maps that my we created for the water pack and I was assigned to Le Palale area where we created the map for the advertisers. And uh, just some advice for the internships. Uh, it's for the new interns, you know, uh, here in Katosa, as you saw, there's a lot of uh, softwares that you have to learn. So you need to be someone who's eager to learn. You shouldn't be discouraged by um, seeing i know it's daunting when you see some a new software and you have to use it for a project that you don't know how to use it so you you should be able to be like that and ask questions you shouldn't hesitate to ask questions which i think i i didn't do very much but you know i i think that's one of the biggest uh take i'm gonna have as well and which I, I think I, I did greatly what was to take notes. Uh, I was able to take notes, especially when they introduced that logic uh, notebook and taking system. And of course, networking. So as you come here, network with your colleagues, with your with your supervisors, whoever is supervising you uh, for your internship so that you can build a relationship for the future. Because just because, uh, you, you're gonna go in the internship and then it ends, doesn't mean it ends at that time. And for number six is to stay organized. I put it in red because I wasn't as organized as I wanted to be. I think I could have done better than I, I was, especially in, in the last month. And uh, that's the last, and just a, a quote. I, I don't know who who said it, but you know they said yes. It's just not not just maps with endless special features, but a compass that guides us through the intricate landscapes of our world, revealing patterns of puzzles and connecting the dots of our planet history. And um, following next to my special analysis. I chose the, the the Golden Harvest Park. It's a, it's near my area. I stay in North Riding, so it's near there. So it's like two kilometers away from me. So this is the the area. It, it's like a, a park. Unfortunately, it's not free to enter. So you have to pay to enter. You pay like I, the last time I went there, it was fifty bucks. So it's not that expensive. So. The, the overview of my project is um, you had to do the database setup and visualization using Postgres SQL, and you integrate the uh, the database uh, using QGI using uh, PostGIS extension in QGIS, and then and then and then you'll be able to what, what's happening. Oh. That's not me. No, I thought... no, don't worry, just continue, please, don't worry. Um, maybe just uh, those who uh, uh, rather avoid putting uh, messages because it will distract people. Okay, all right. So, uh, and then the, the, the second part was to uh, create, uh, that was to create efficient data collection uh, forms, which they should be user-friendly, which when we use, uh, you filled on your, on your mobile app while you're walking around collecting your data, you'd be able to, to fill uh, that data and also to enable offline editing tools so that you can enable when there's no internet, especially when there's load shedding. Uh, and then you, you analyze the data using the, the models to assess the spatial relationship and make an informed decision making. So this was the overview of the map. Uh, this is how my, my map ended up uh, um, after I've collected all the data points that I wanted. 
And one of the first insights was to check the, um, the, the how, how many points did I collect in, in, in the area, in, 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 in the golden harvest field, which you can see the summer of it here. And also in the summer of here as well. Uh, but here, this is more focused on the area of the, the land use. Uh, where you, uh, I was checking the, the, because this was the, the, the layer that had the most feature, the most area coverage on, on, on my map. So the, I, I was checking the, the area coverage of it, with how, which um, feature covered the most uh, in, in my map, which were the trees. And these were some of the, um, some of the, this was in kilometers here, but here this one is in meter square. This was in kilometer square, so I converted it because it, it was unreadable. And this is also the, some of the layers in buildings and the altar polygons highlighted in red. So you could see that that one was the, the highest one. I think you saw I had a big uh, lake there, so that was one of the the biggest coverage of of, of my of my map. And the length, well, total length of the polygon, well, this is how they were distributed. And the longest one, it was an electric fence around, because there was an estate near to where I was. So there was an electric fence that was covering the whole estate. I think that that, that was the, the longest electric fence, which you can see that it's highlighted in red. And when it comes to the river, uh, of course, you, you you would expect a river to have more length compared to um, a stream, which is, which is the one at the top there, which if you go to, it, it will be the stream here. But there's a, the stream here, which will be the one that, that covered the longest distance. And then, uh, Going to the most isolated point. Okay, uh, it was this area. For some reason, this is here. I don't know, but this was the the, the water point here. I think it it was far end at the at the far north of the area, which was uh, the distance was around 400 meters away from the nearest um, feature point, which is this monitoring station. So that was the most assertive point in my in my map, which I, I also I don't understand why they put a, a water point there at the area. And the, the, the most dominant type feature in my map, it was the vegetation points, which had like 91 features. As you can see, all those trees there, those are the vegetation points. So the, the ones were the most dominant type feature in my map. And um, in summary, I just we as a place um, a, a foundation on creating entity relation databases using PostgreSQL SQL and integrating it to QGIS using the PostGIS extension, and be able to represent the data uh, on on Q, on QGIS and be able to take that data go and collect points using QField and uh, create that uh, spatial analysis from uh, all the data that we got so that the data that we just collected can tell us a story or what is the story of my, um, the, the, the point that I, I was, uh, the area that I was talking about. And that's it for me. Hoping I wasn't too long. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, any last going outgoing advice to your your new uh, to your successes? Oh yes, just to 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 repeat again uh, for my successes, please um, be be in, in this um, mindset that you, you, when you start the internship, you you have to learn a lot of uh, softwares and you you have to do multiple projects at once you'll have to learn a software you say maybe you have to do a map of qrgis and you have to do something on on, on python meaning it's programming and then it's digitizing maps so you have to be someone who's able to 
to be able to focus and learn multiple things at once. And you, you must uh, be able to take notes as well. And most importantly, stay organized. Thank you so much for Yanni. Um, any short questions from the rest of the Cartosa team for the interns? Any comments or suggestions or um, praise or anything you want to offer to them? Everything of the best for the future. Yeah, I think if we you need to take into consideration what the the older interns said and the advice they've given, and um, good luck, good luck for the next three months. <laughs>